Hello photographers, direct support for these videos comes from sales of my video courses or the use of my affiliate links, all of which can be found down in the description. In this video, I'm going to explain the autofocus system for the Sony A7 III camera. Now you can access most of these settings one of two ways. You can either go through the actual menu on the camera or you can access a lot of this stuff using the quick menu, which is accessed with the function button on the back of the camera. I'm going to show you most of the stuff through the quick menu because that's the quicker and easier way to access these things. So if you press this function button on the back of the camera, it brings up this quick menu here. And, and just a note, I'm in manual mode. This menu option is going to be different if you're not in one of the manual modes, such as manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, or program auto. Now the first option we have here is the drive mode. And the drive mode is tangential to the focusing system, but it's not actually part of the focusing system. So we're gonna move over to the actual focus mode. Now, when you're in the quick menu here, you can actually see or change the options one of two ways. You can spin the dial on the back of the camera to go through these options, or if you press the center button, it'll bring up a sidebar menu of options. So we're gonna use this sidebar here, and you'll see that the very first option is the single shot autofocus mode. And what that means is it will lock focus when you half press the shutter button on your subject, and it will maintain that focus lock whether or not you move the camera until you either take a photograph or you release the shutter button. So that's single shot mode. That's the default mode that cameras are usually in. However, this camera actually comes by default in the next mode, which is the AFA mode. So I had my change to AFS. AFA is an automatic mode, and we're gonna skip that for a moment because we're first going to go down to AFC. AFC is continuous focus. Continuous is exactly what it sounds like. It continuously focuses on subjects as they move throughout the scene. This is typically used for sports and action photography. Now we're gonna go back up to AFA because AFA is an automatic mode where the camera decides whether or not to use single shot focus or to use continuous focus based on what it sees in the scene and if the subject is moving or not by the camera's detection. I personally don't like this mode. I like to know what my camera's gonna do when I press the shutter button and I don't like to have that uncertainty. But if you like this kind of mode where it's going to decide for you, there's no problem with that. Now after these three modes, which are pretty standard on every camera, we have the DMF mode. And DMF is a hybrid autofocus manual focus mode. This is really great for close up and macro photography because what it allows you to do is start with autofocus. What you can do is you can focus on your subject using the autofocus option. And then you can fine tune that focus using the focus ring on your lens, which is why this is so good for macro focus and close up photography where you want very, very precise focus. So I'm gonna hit that function button, go back into the menu, hit the center button, and the last option is just straight manual focus. We're pressing the shutter button, will not focus at all. And the only way you can focus is by using the focus ring on the lens itself. So those are the different focus modes you have to choose from. I'm gonna go back up to single shot and activate that, press the function button one more time, and now we're gonna move over to the focus area options, and I'm gonna hit the center button to bring up that menu. And I'm gonna move back to the top. By default, your camera is set into the wide focus area. And what the wide focus area does is let the camera decide what it thinks it should focus on. It'll use all of the focus points available to the camera. The camera has 834 total focus points and it will pick what and where to focus in the image. The next option is zone mode. And with zone, what you are able to do is use the joystick to move around this sort of large zone area. You see this square box on the screen? This is the zone that the camera is going to focus in. And you can move it around. So if the subject is in the upper right hand corner, you could put the focus area there and then that's where the camera will focus in the scene. So I'm gonna hit function again and we're gonna go back into our options. And the next is center focus. Center is exactly what it sounds like. Whatever is in the center of the frame, that's where the camera's gonna focus. We're gonna hit function one more time, go back in, and now we have flexible spot M. So there's flexible spot and then there's the size of that spot. So this back dial here is also a set of buttons, up, down, left, and right. And you'll see that there's a little left and right arrow 
on either side of this icon. And if I press these buttons, you can see it changes the size of the flexible spot. You have large, small, medium. Now, I don't recommend using the small option unless you are shooting close-up detail work or macro photography. If you're shooting general photography and you try to use small, the camera's going to have a hard time focusing. So you're better off using medium for portraits and large for general photography. Now, what flexible spot does is set a focus point that you can then move using this joystick here on the back of the camera. So if we point the camera right here, you'll see I can move this spot. This allows you to very precisely control where the camera is going to focus. Now if we go back into the menu, we have yet another option here, which is expanded flexible spot. Now I mentioned, based on the size of your focus point and flexible spot, that the camera can have difficulty focusing. Well, expanded flexible spot is really nice because what it does is still allow you to choose a focus point wherever you want, but if the camera is having difficulty focusing using that spot, it'll use the adjacent spots around it to help it obtain focus. So we're gonna hit function again and hit the center button and go down to lock on AF Expanded Flexible Spot, which is a mouthful, great naming scheme, Sony. You'll notice that that option is actually grayed out. It's grayed out because this mode is only available when your drive mode is set to continuous focus. So I'm gonna hit the function button and move over to the focus mode and switch that to AFC for continuous. And then I'm gonna hit the function button again and go back to focus area. And now you can see that this option, lock on AF expanded flexible spot is available. What this does is work with moving subjects. And what happens is you have a focus area set here and the camera is going to pick the focus area. You can see it's creating this box here when it tries to focus and it's going to lock on a subject that's moving and track the subject through the scene while it is moving around. So I'm gonna go back into the function menu and change that to my choice, which is flexible spot. And now we're gonna actually go into the menu system and look at a few of the options in the menu system. So if you tap the menu button on the back of the camera, you're brought to your camera menus, and we're gonna move through these until we find the right options, which right here is this priority set in AFS and priority set in AFC. So these two options determine what the camera does when you press the shutter button and how the camera determines whether or not it's going to take a photo. Sometimes when you're trying to take a photo, the camera hasn't quite obtained focus, but you've already pressed that shutter button all of the way down. And what these settings do is allow you to tell the camera if you want it to not take a photo until it has a solid focus lock, or if you want it to take that photo when you press the shutter button, regardless of whether or not it has an actual focus lock. So if you have it set to priority for AF, then that means it will not take a photo unless the camera has obtained a focus lock. If you want it to always take the photo, whether or not you actually have a solid focus lock, then you would want to set that to release instead of AF. Release means shutter release has priority here over focus, and it's always going to take that photo when you press the shutter button, barring other problems that might be causing it to stop. The last option is balanced emphasis. That's auto mode. The camera decides if it should prioritize focus or if it should prioritize releasing the shutter for you. And I don't like when the camera decides for me. I prefer to have a focus lock, so I set mine to AF. Now you notice that this is for AFS, that's single shot focus, where you press the shutter button halfway down to get a focus lock. You can also tell it how to behave when you're using continuous focus mode. And you'll notice that I have my continuous priority set to release. Because when you're shooting continuous, generally speaking, you're shooting moving subjects and your focus may not always be dead on accurate. But for me, it's important to get that photo regardless. So in that case, I prioritize the release because I would rather have the camera take the photo than not take the photo. Now we're gonna move over to the next menu page and we're gonna take a look at the center lock on AF. This is another tracking option and it works similar to how that lock on AF gobbledygook one worked, but this one activates a little bit of a different way. So what you have to do is you have to come into this option and you have to turn it on. Even though it says it's on, you have to turn it on to tell the camera that you want to use this function. So we're going to go in there and we're going to hit on. And when you do, you'll see it says tracks nearest subject to screen center. So what you would do is you would center your subject on the screen and you would obtain a focus lock. 
and then the camera will track that subject as it moves throughout the scene. Now the next thing I want to show you is the face and eye autofocus setting. Sony has fabulous face and eye detection and it's worth using this but it's not necessarily worth having this on all the time if you don't always shoot portraits and people. The camera actually has it turned on by default, but what I like to do is set this option to one of the camera's custom buttons. So instead of going into the menu to turn this option on or off, I can just turn it on or off with the press of a button on the back of the camera. So I'm gonna show you how to program that button. What we're gonna do is move over to camera page two, and then we're going to move to page, I think it's six or seven of this subsection. And what we're looking for is this right here. It's page eight, we're looking for custom keys. So you have custom keys for photos, custom keys for video, and custom keys for playback. We're looking at custom key for photo. And if you press that, you have a number of different custom key bop options. And you'll see that custom button four, I already have set to face and eye priority with autofocus. So what you would do is you would select the one that you wanna change and custom button four is the trash button down here. You just hit the center button on the back of the camera to go in there. And then what you do is you go through the menus until you find the particular option you wanna use. In this case, AF2 is the page that has the face and eye priority option on. So with that locked in, all you gotta do is press this button on the back of the camera. It brings this option up and you can turn it on and now face and eye detect is turned on for me. And when I'm done shooting my subjects, I press the trash button again and I can turn it off and it is off and it's not going to interfere with my focusing. So that's the Sony a7 III autofocus system. There's a lot going on here, which is why I wanted to explain all the different options that you have. If you have questions, let me know down in the comments. If you wanna do the YouTube bullshit to help me out, that'd be great, like, subscribe, whatever, but make sure you take some damn photos.